Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about box bootle um, decanters. This is one. Um, this started as a German wine bottle from the Franconia region. They've made this, this pattern a long time, I think since the 18th century, but in the middle of the 19th century it became a fashionable item that people would make into um, decanters by putting these metal collars on putting stops in this one's a bit bust but yeah it's the one that came with it and um, yeah so this is a box bootle bottle you'll see them around so unlike the Mel's which you hardly ever see this is something that you're gonna see I, it's featured in quite a few of my videos when I've been out doing antique centers so you do see these um, and some of them don't have any top they just have a metal top and they they vary um, some of them are very just machine made um, even the handles as well, um, you know, just auto blown glass, um, and then some of them are very handmade. So I have a couple of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of these. Then I'm going to show you some book references. Then I'm going to show you what evolved out of these, and I'll show you another book reference. So that's how it's going to go today. So these are the two um, box bootle decanters that I have. Um, and they look very similar um, but in actual fact they're very different beasts and, and require different levels of skill to make obviously the brown is not such a good color green is a better color as far as value goes you know they come in you see blue ones I've seen amethyst ones and then pale amber brown I think brown's probably the worst color um, so yeah, let me show you why these, although they look superficially the same, why they are very different beasts. So we'll have a look at this one first. We'll pick it up. And if you look underneath, let me take this stuff off because it, yeah, it's half rotted away. It is 150 years old. So as they say, shit happens. Um, so yeah, this is blown into a mold. You can see it's got a lot of wear on it, so yeah, it is a nice old bottle, but um, it is blown into a mould completely. You can see the seam, and then the handle has been ma manually added. It's also got a funny little things. So quite often they have this where they put them and then they just twist the end up like that. Um, yeah, and these might have had a lot like a, a ridge that runs around here and what they do is they grind those off and I was told that you could buy these collars as a kit and stick them on yourself it was a thing now the quality of the collars vary a lot um, this one's um, I'm not even sure what that's made out of I think it might be copper um, yeah, it was probably this one was probably um, had a silver plate on it. Sheffield plate that is where it's heated on because it's on copper. Um, and yeah, so this one. Also, the other thing to look at is actually the shape. Yeah, they have a very similar shape. Can you see? The difference is that this one is a completely hand blown bottle bottle. Okay. Um, so that's why it's a different beast. So it looks exactly the same. In actual fact, it's completely hand shaped. It has a polished pontal. You can see the line of wear. So yeah, it looks like it's got but this is quality wise, this is a very different beast. I think the glass is a bit thinner on this one the end isn't fold up it just kind of goes to a bit of a point that's broken off um, so yeah but the top is a bit, a bit more sophisticated so this top here you can see inside like this yeah it's nickel I think it would have been silver plated so this is actually so while that one's copper which means that it's Sheffield plated, so not electroplated, you'd have heated um, 
silver foil onto the surface of it. This would have been nickel plated, so electro plated. It would have been a, a new process about the time this was made. Whereas the, this is the top that came with this one too. Um, this is copper with silver plate on it. So that's that's like foil. In a way, this is a bit the wrong way around. I think. Yeah. I don't even know what that's made out of, but anyway. But anyway, yeah, that's copper, and that would have had um, silver foil. You can see a little bit of the silver that's still left, heated onto it. Um, so yeah, when this was made, um, electroplating was a brand new process. Um, so not everything, people would have done things like that, where it was transitioning from electroplate to, from Sheffield plate to electro plate. Um, yeah, my PC is being a bit of a bum, making a noise. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, this is these are the two I've got. You you do have some of that are completely machine made, where the handle is actually part of the mold as well. Um, but this is slightly different. So that's the different qualities you get. The you get the completely hand blown ones. And then you get the sort of like the bottles blown into a mold um, and the handles added. And then you get the ones where the whole thing is blown into a mold um, or pressed even or some sort of water blown with the handle part of the of the mold. So, yeah, so those are the those are the box brutal bottles and the tops come as a different materials. I've even seen um, ones with solid silver tops. So it was a fashionable thing. Um, I think it, it was because these are from Franconia in Germany, um, which is the area close to the area where Prince Albert came from. So I think this is to do with Prince Albert because it's also they kind of became popular around the same time as Prince Albert came to, to the UK in married Queen Victoria, you know, brought Christmas trees and all sorts of other German esque things. So, um, yeah. So these are the bottles I've got. Let's have a look at a couple of um, couple of book references. So this book is um, The Decanter, an illustrated history of glass from 1650 by Andy McConnell. And um, yeah, so what he's actually got here, I didn't realize um, he's dated these from, it says typical mid 19th century, blah, blah, blah. And he's dating them from 1845. Um, so anyway, what he's actually got here is a rundown of the different qualities. So this one looks to be like my brown one, which is um, completely, um, you know, hand blown. And then this one looks like it's a mold blown one. Cause you can see in the picture where the lights on it, it's got a bit of texture, but with an applied handle. And then this one, looks to be a mold blown one with the handle as part of the mold don't ask me how to do that but they do um and then he's got this fancy doodah set up where you've got a bunch of wine bottles um in a silver um stand and everything these the silver stand is dated 1865 um made by robert hennel and it's actually from the um from a yacht club so yeah that's quite a fancy doodah thing um, but anyway so that's what we've got in here the, it says here that it's first appeared in 1800 and to 1870 quick turn flasks or flag box bootles literary goat bag so yeah and he just tells you where they're from frankish yeah frankish wines so anyway um that's where we are with those ones this book is the decanter ancient to modern by andy mcconnell so this is a newer book than the old one and i uh, just thought we'd check it for it if there's any more changes so what we've got here is the the stand that we were looking at earlier and um 
what is nice about this picture is that if you look here you can see the surface texture on the bottle what that's telling me is that this is not a hand blown bottle this is a mold blown bottle and they've then put it into this beautiful silver stand little plates on it and it's used by the I think it's used by the Royal Yacht Club or something and um, yeah super fancy but these are mold blown so it should, you know bottles that are just wine bottles but they've tarted them up completely so they were very fashionable and then these are new new ones that they've got here but they're very similar to the ones that, in fact, actually no that's the same pictures we were looking at earlier because that that light bit there at the bottom is the same this is a different one um which is a bit unusual because it's very thick here and thins down so anyway these are all the same periods that they were talking about earlier but um what happened is is that these are very fashionable you know we have a lot of glass makers put them into fancy silver stands and everything and they're crap bottles so can't we make better ones so yeah this happened yeah it's got the miser bottle here as well um so yeah the style um carried on but just in you know properly made bottle you know not not throwaway bottles single use bottles that were then carried on in use um these are made to be fancy bottles so um i've got a couple i pulled out to show you um, one you've seen before you wouldn't recognize it straight away yay so i'm showing you one of my miser bottles that that we saw in a previous video um but this is based on a box bottle because it's got the same shape yeah so this handle is a post 1870 so this is from 1870s onwards this is the hand type of handle that was so potentially this is an earlier bottle because the style of handle is one that was dying in the 1830s so this could be from the 50s or 60s but it is in, but look at the shape still got that flattened so it's not just a round bottle um, twisted handles these were coming in in the 1850s so it could be as early as that this is um and just to show you the level of quality you looked at my other one which is a mold blown bottle look at that that is not in the same league even the stopper you know um underneath polished pontal um the other side's got stars on it yeah this is a properly fancy bottle that's not a throwaway item that's there you fill that with wine this will pop um because it's etched, especially if it's clean i don't it probably could do with a wash with soap to get any if you got any grease off that it'd look whiter and then when you fill it with red wine it'd look lovely and contrasty um this too has got polished pontal as well so um not as much work has gone into this but um still a well-made item so yeah um complete change and um shows that yeah it was fashionable so it ended up being commercialized so this book is great british wine accessories by robin butler and um yeah so this is just showing you different levels so this is a another silver stand um i think this is plate um but yeah with the nice bottles you can see with the handle like the miser bottle that we were looking at and um oh it says oval flask jugs first made in the mid 19th century the set of three electro plated frame blah 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 rosary 1867 on the underside um the rib handles upwards for downwards so the the style of the frame is earlier than the bottles he's saying because um he's saying these were introduced in 1880 i think these rib handles were introduced a bit earlier than that um in the 1870s um i think it's 1874 
Um, but anyway, yeah, um, it just shows you the sort of like commercialization. It was fashionable. It came from these wine bottles and then they made it into really fancy bottles um, and made people spend real money. This book is Hallmarks of Antique Glass by R. Wilkinson. And I just thought I'd truck this one out. So this book was, book was written in 1968 and it has this here. Yeah, it's number four. Okay, and it's labeled over the page. And it says here, flagon shaped bottle in amethyst illustrating the use of silver plated top with cork fixture circa 1800. That is so wrong. And although I like this book, old books, and this is actually a good old book, the older you get, the more likely you have mistakes that, that are like this. He's probably... I've not seen any original material from box bootles. I've only seen what's in books. And he's probably seen this somewhere in another book or someone's told him. This guy was actually in the glass business. Um, yeah, his family had a glass factory. So he's going by what he's been told by either other glass makers who might have made it up or what he's seen in another book. Um, but when he's this far adrift and that's why as i've always tell you catalogs are king um or boxes or labels uh, so yeah anyway i just thought i'd highlight that so there we have it uh box bootle i think you could call them according to the books bottles jugs decanters or flasks so um and Actually, no, I am not going to stop now. I'm just going to check some stuff online. Let's come back. So I thought I'd start by looking in eBay. Looked at Box Brutal. And so these are the modern bottles that you get now. Um, they are, they don't have the handles on. They are the same sort of like ovoid flask shape and about the same size with a little ring around the neck. Um, you can even get a postcard from from the area but hardly anybody knows what they are i rarely see them accurately labeled when i'm out and about um here's one that does have a handle it's in australia uh box little red damn blood anyway 82 and that doesn't even have a, a nice top on it um yeah so yeah there's not a lot going on here a rare antique so this looks like it's an earlier one it's from germany um the, the way the top is looks earlier um 40 pounds so they do they seem to be getting decent money this one is not what they're saying box brutal flashing in glass mining what is it from Germany. This is a Persian saddle flask. It's not a box bootle at all. And let's just have a look. Yeah, that's a Persian saddle flask. It's quite a cool one. Yeah, it's not quite standard. A nice colour as well. But anyway, that's that's a complete aside. Um, and if we go over the page, I've done an image search for um box brutals and you can see there's lots of modern ones do you see oh there's the persian saddle flask again um there's not much going on there's a, that's a different persian paddle saddle flask actually the one we were just looking at yeah it's i'm not seeing any with handles on here oh there's one and someone's titivated it up there's a couple there. Um, yeah, I didn't actually look ahead, so I just looked and thought, oh yeah, there's going to be hardly anything appearing. So yeah, people know what the modern bottles are, but they don't know what the old ones are. So that's one we've already seen. And 
Yeah, hardly anything with handles on. What's this? Let's go back to. Is it gone? Yeah, this one here. Let's see if we can just. Sorry, I'm being really unprofessional here, not checking ahead and seeing what I'm actually looking at. I'm just clicking around and. 10 years ago, this is probably not going to come up. Oh, it did. And I have to do something to unlock the price. So, anyway, um, box bootle Franconia wine glass, wine bottles, antique. And no, that's it. So, anyway, we'll, we'll come out of here and I'm not going to sign up. So, what did my little online search prove? Yeah, I'm staying obscure. And in a way, I've seen at least half a dozen of these when I've been making my films. So they are out there. It's just that nobody knows what they are. And looking in the books, until Andy McConnell's book came out, I didn't know what they were. Um, and I doubt anybody else did. Um, so, yeah. Um, get the Andy McConnell book. They're still on sale as far as I know. He's still got them. And um, with that said, um, yeah, the new book. Because it don't get the old well you can get the old one but if you want to pay 150 pounds for it but the new one is still in print so you're paying the, the current price for it um with that said uh, the books i use will be in the description below and uh, yeah so please remember to like and subscribe and i hope you have a good evening and uh, thank you for watching